Hello everyone, my name is Eric Jones. I am better known as the Turf Teacher and welcome to the course entitled Special Sites for Landscape and Irrigation Design. This course has a course number of 11822 from the North Carolina Irrigation Contractors Licensing Board and this course will give you one half continuing education credit. So this is worth one half hour. So the lecture will be roughly uh, 30 minutes and then you will have a five question quiz at the very end. A lot of contractors have been emailing me and calling me wanting to know if they had just if I had just a half hour credit. So this year we've got three half hour credits. You have uh, this course itself and then we have the uh, turf and landscape irrigation best management practices and then we have a business course for half an hour so if you're coming in only needing two and a half hours three and a half hours i've got you covered on those half hours but this course uh, will get you that half hour for irrigation credit and it's about landscape uh, and irrigation design and some of the problems that we're going to run into uh, as a irrigation and landscape contractor so let's go ahead and move into our objectives uh, and we're going to describe the special conditions that apply to the following sites while identifying and applying effective design guidelines now let's take a look at each one of these and we're going to see some pretty cool pictures uh, of these properties but let's take the corner site one of my favorite favorite um, landscape and irrigation designs to do it it's it's a lot easier plus we have we have two canvases uh to do curb appeal on and it, it just gives a great opportunity for us to show our design skills and actually do something really nice for our clients and i think it's a lot easier to irrigate it makes it a lot easier to get around to the back you're not having to go through somebody else's yard or anything we all know how tight these lots can be so that corner lot really, really gives us an opportunity to do a good design for both landscape and irrigation. The wooded site now brings a lot of opportunities for us and brings a lot of constraints, especially when it comes to irrigation, because we've got to deal with tree roots and everything else. But, you know, we can work around it and it makes for uh, makes for a good design having that wooded site. Slope site. And we've all done these before too, where we have a steep driveway, we have a, a backyard that slopes off to the back down to a pond or anything like that. These slope sites, they bring their own problems and constraints as well as opportunities with it. And then the townhouse courtyard. These can really, really be fun and they can really, really be challenging. I mean, just think about it. Now, we're going to see some pictures towards the end of this presentation of a townhouse courtyard that we went and did an estimate for and I've done a little design for them, but we did not get the job. Uh, they thought we were uh, a little too high. In fact, they thought we were way too high, but it's, 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 we all been there and done that. So, um, but we've got good pictures of it. And this, you know, townhome, uh, they were on the corner but they had two neighbors butted up right side by side. Luckily, we were if we'd have got the job, we could have at least went around the right-hand side of the house, but what if they were in the middle of two other townhomes and you had to, you know, go around other people's properties and and actually, you know, do damage to it or actually have to trench because they were wanting irrigation back there and they were wanting a gas line for a uh, fire pit. So, these each bring their own constraints and possibilities uh, to it. And so the corner site, look at some of these site conditions. It's a double front yard. Like I said, guys, we have we have two pallets that we can work with when it comes uh, to uh, doing a design. Uh, majority of the site is in the public realm. It's in the public view, as you can see here. Uh, this picture here, I actually built this house. This is in the neighborhood Lockhurst. Yes, I had a general contractor's license years ago. Just did uh, retake the exam and pass the uh, the NASCLA uh, general contractor's exam. Don't ever want to build houses again, but uh, got our GC license to to help out in the uh, the landscape uh, contracting side. If we ever get into to major retaining walls or anything like that, I think that's just a good license uh, to have uh, as a landscape and irrigation uh, contractor. But uh, but look at that. Look at that. Look at that turf grass. You know that the turf teacher uh, did that sod and, and everything for for that property. 
but you do have a limited backyard space uh, this one did have a little bit more uh, as you can see we lined it with a berm in the back and did some uh, wax myrtles and stuff uh, the front entry can be confusing and i've seen corner lots where that is the case but it is not the case in this instance because the the front door is very predominant with the uh, the circle driveway and with the uh, the garage door and, and where they're talking about the front entry being confusing is if there were doors on either side or if there were sidewalks leading up to a side door on that uh, corner side and then a sidewalk to the front. So that that's where it can get confusing. Uh, and it can be a lack of privacy. That's why we did that berm in the back uh, for the individuals. And, uh, you know, they are, you know, you know, two sides of the house is going to have vehicular traffic all the time. And luckily the garage is on that one side and then upstairs up there is, is a bonus room over the garage. So at least there's no bedrooms or anything that people are, uh, you know, shining their car lights in when they, when they turn on the road. But, uh, um, you know, a good opportunity for a landscape design and or landscape architect to come in and do uh, some, some really good landscaping. Design guidelines, you know, we need to unify the street frontage. We need to establish that hierarchy of emphasis and then identify entry walks. And, and this house, as you can see, this is an aerial map uh, from, from Google, uh, from Google Maps. Or not Google Maps, I take that back. This is actually from Forsyth County Geodata, uh, you know. Um, hopefully you're in a county or a municipality that has a good geodata system and, and we do uh, at uh, in, in Winston-Salem Forsyth County and as you can see you know the sidewalks are identified you can see it going up to the front door there it's right off of that circle driveway we need to locate selected uses in the front which mainly here is is parking uh, I wanted to have that circular drive it's always hard backing out and especially being on that corner lot it's going to be um, very difficult sometimes if you know if let's say the the homeowner had to back out and somebody pulls on their road you know you can see pebble lake right there uh is the, is the corner side road but uh, compton ridge road is is the actual address of this house if somebody pulled on to compton ridge really fast and they were backing out of the driveway it could it could make for a dangerous situation so i wanted that circle drive so they could back out and then pull around and pull out of their driveway instead of having to back out uh, we need to establish the privacy we did in the backyard uh, with the berm and the the wax myrtles and stuff that we did and then we need to urbanize the backyard and <laughs> maybe maybe not i think that can can be basically um you know what the client wants if they want it urbanized or not but you know they could have the urban garden or other type urban landscaping in the back but uh, um, this made made for a for a beautiful home uh, i sold it too cheap uh, but when the market crashed we kind of did what we had to do uh, but they do have the privacy in the back and and they have what they need here is a uh, the front picture of it. Now this is uh, you know a couple of years after I built the house, and you know the homeowner is mowing it themselves, uh, and so you can see they've not used a weed eater or anything like that, but uh, they've kind of let it go go downhill a little bit. Uh, got some weeds and stuff coming up in the shrub beds, and they hadn't pine needled it. To, but you know uh, this house is on its third owner right now, and they've actually uh, brought it up to uh, to standard with their landscaping. But as you can see, again, you know we've identified what we need to do in the front. We need to get people to the front door, and we have that circle drive uh, to get um, easy egress through uh, through the site to to get in and out of the driveway a lot easier. Uh, as you can see, there's there's not much privacy there on the front, but it definitely is in the back. And you'll see that here in the next uh, picture. And so uh, the areas right here, you know, this is the wax myrtles, wax myrtles. And then we've got some uh, uh, a magnolia back here in the corner. But this berm kind of stretches on out. And recently they've actually added some more plant material here. So they do have a nice screened in um, backyard for for privacy you know and the kids can be out there playing and stuff uh so it makes makes for a uh 
good, good backyard. Now, as you guys have seen in the in the last lecture, or if you took the typical residential site with me during your landscape hours, um, again, you know, as a builder, I really had no choice. They had to put the gas meters here. They actually had to put uh, the AC units. I mean, it was it was just where they had to go. So, um, unfortunately, um, that's what that's what happened. And so, not looking too good right now. But well, got the uh, European white birch again. You know, not much maintenance going on uh, since the homeowners have have moved in. But all of this has changed. They've even got a play set and a sandbox back there now. And as you can see it here, this is a more recent Google Earth snapshot of the house. And, uh, you know, the, the, gra the grass is a lot greener. And, you know, they've got the play set back there. And they've actually, uh, you know, built this fence right here. So the third owners actually really came in and did a lot to uh, the backyard after um, the individuals that we built it for. The wooded site. Now here's a good picture of my mom and dad's house. Um, the special site conditions of the wooded light. It is its own microclimate. We're going to have to deal with tree roots. And we've got that, I think, a good thing when it comes to visual separation. You've got that, that separation in between um, your sight and and cars going by there's that the distinction in between it those those tree that tree line in the front gives that visual separation uh, for mom and dad and kind of secludes them a little bit and 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 plus this being a slope so we've actually looking at uh, two of the uh, the sites that we are uh, lucky enough to be talking about in these lectures you got the slope site and we've got the the wooded site dad and mom they do not have an irrigation system here uh, but uh, they do have a microclimate with the shade that is created, so they're only having to uh, use you know things like rhododendron, azaleas, and stuff in the front foundation. And really, they've kept that uh, that wooded area in the front just a natural area. We'll mulch it or pine needle it uh, every so often, but most of the time they'll just kind of let the leaves build up, and then we'll come in and uh, do the mulching for it. Um, when you have a wooded site, the idea is to minimize the lawn. Uh, it's just hard to get, you know, grass to grow in the shade. I mean, there are shade mixes and stuff that you can use now, but typically it's better just to have, uh, as minimum grass as you can have and, and just create those natural bed lines and just kind of let the woods, uh, be a part of the landscape design around the existing trees don't try to take them down or anything like that just build it into the design maintain the existing grade we did uh, we used to have uh, sergeant's juniper on the front slope there but we've removed that and actually uh, you know seeded the area and got a good stand of grass on it and we need to minimize the soil compaction, which we do, the fall aeration and seeding on it every year. And then use the shade tolerant plants. And mom and dad's always done that, like I said, with the, uh, the rhododendron and the azaleas in their uh, foundation plants. And then, um, you know, in that wood line, they're just leaving it all woods. So what are some issues with this wooded lot? Like I said, you know, tree roots, when you do want to plant plants, you're having to deal with the larger tree roots. It would be kind of hard to do an irrigation system because you are going to cut tree roots. Um, the shade, you're going to have to use the shade loving plants. You may have a client that wants um, certain types of plants that bloom and, and, and you can't because it's too shady. Uh, the client may want a garden. They can't because it's too shady. So there's 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 some pluses and there's some minuses uh, when you have a wooded lot. So um, it takes a good designer to come in and kind of help the clients see those uh, types of situations. And the slope site. Special site conditions would be the instability of it. Uh, the downhill orientation and, and even drainage. And as you can see here, we, uh, we did a house uh, in the Kerner, Kernersville area where uh, they didn't like that slope 
I mean, really, from where we had the retaining walls, I mean, it was just a complete drop off. So we came in and, and, and did the retaining wall and got a little flat area. And so it, what it was was just to kind of level up that front yard. Yes, everything still got a slope uh, towards the, the back. But uh, what we did is we did build up some front yard uh, for, for our clients here. And that, you know, everybody wants that, that flat front yard. They, they want to be able to um, be able to do some landscaping around it and, and everything like that. And when it's sloping like that, we just couldn't do it. Uh, so your design guidelines, you need to fit the uses for the slope. You need to accommodate the movement, especially of the water. You need to take advantage of views, which with, with here, there wasn't too many views. Um, a lot of times if you're in the mountains and you have that slope site, and we actually have a client that uh, moved from a residential neighborhood. They bought some property just not far up the road, but they have the most magnificent view of Pilot Mountain. You would have never thought that they would have had it there. I mean, they go down this two mile gravel road to get to their property and uh, their, their house is sloped and wooded and uh, the, uh, the homeowners have cleared most of it. They went up there, they bought a tractor. I mean, they, they retired, so they went up there and they got a tractor and they, they cut all the brush down and stuff, and it backs right up to the Yakin River, and they can look up and see the most gorgeous view of Pilot Mountain, unreal. I mean, they did some searching and hunting for that piece of property, uh, and it's they've turned it into uh, uh, into a gold mine view. So uh, they'll, they'll never sell it, because I mean, it's just unbelievable. Uh, the view of the of the river and the mountain that they've got, but they have had some issues with with runoff and erosion, so they had to go in and do some uh, Celsius matting and and things of that nature once they cut those trees down to to prevent all of the erosion uh, from happening. But back to here, like I said, you know we created this, uh, I and mean, because guys, this really sloped down right there. We were able to, to give some uh, um, flat front yard for them and then created this terrace here, uh, which we, you know, we put some uh, shrubs and, and everything right there. So we created a nice little front yard uh, for, for these uh, homeowners. More pictures, you know, everything's still sloping towards the back. Now, I uh, I did want to, to point this out. I got this picture. Um, oh, I can't remember where I got it from. I got it from a, a civil engineer that actually did a uh, lecture on um, um, sloping a yard. And so I grabbed this picture to, to show you guys. This is an actual job site. Look, look at this slope. I mean, this just tells you how ignorant some people can be. Um, I mean, there's there's no way a homeowner should ever have to deal with this right here. I mean, a little bit of rain, a little bit of wet leaves, definitely snow and ice. This is going to be a major, major problem uh, for the homeowner. But really, I mean, this was poor planning from the start. There was, I mean, the builder had to have known this was going to happen and they should have removed a lot of this soil right here to prevent this from happening but oh well it's uh i feel sorry for the homeowners i'm sure i'm sure he's probably uh still sitting on this uh spec house but uh very very uh poor design when it comes to grading ladies and gentlemen and so for slope there is the slope equation uh, slope is equivalent to rise over run. It is the change in elevation and over the change in distance. And slope is often shown in terms of a percentage in which case S times 100 is equivalent to S percentage. So we're multiplying it by a uh, 100 to give us that percentage. And, you know, I've always heard um, that, you know, the minimum slope away from a house uh, should be 2% on mulch and turf grass and minimum 1% on, um, you know, paved services. I would 
like to think that it could be a little bit long, you know, more than that. I wouldn't want minimum 1% slope away from my house. I wouldn't want to make sure that the water is running uh, definitely from it. So here we have a slope uh, example. Uh, what is the slope between a point 80 feet away that is four feet higher in elevation? And so uh, we've got a distance or horizontal run of 80 feet and we have a vertical change of four feet. So let's look at the math for this. So we know slope is rise over run. So the rise is four feet over the run of 80. So four over 80 uh, is, you know, four will go in uh, to itself one time. It'll go into 80 uh, 20 times. So 1 20th is 0 0.05. And then when we multiply by 100, it is going to give us the 5% slope. So uh, that is, is pretty sufficient to get water moving away from any type of structure. Here's an example of rear to front drainage. As you can see all the white arrows, you see the white arrows running the water away from the structure or the house into the swales, that swale being a darker line. And so what they're doing is they're bringing all of the water to the front. It's called rear to front drainage. They can get that water into the curb and gutter and get it down uh, downstream or get it into a, uh, um, you know, however they're going to handle uh, the stormwater, the stormwater basins and, and everything. So they're getting it from the property uh, into the curb and gutter. Good way to do it. Slope example. What is the percent slope of a five to one slope? So let's look at the math. Think about it for a minute. So we have five to one. So our horizontal is five, our vertical is one. So every five feet, there is a one foot in vertical change. Therefore, the vertical rise, one and horizontal run of five. So rise and run is um, one to five or 0 0.20. When you multiply it by 100, you get the 20%. Rules of thumb for maximum slope, access drive 8%. Uh, that access drive or driveway a while ago was more than 8%, wasn't it? We got a parking lot of 5%, maintainable grass areas, 3 to 1, stabilized landscape areas, 2 to 1. So that's a lot, uh, you know, a lot better than that uh, that 1% getting away from the house. Uh, asphalt, 1 to 5, concrete, 0.75. Concrete curb, 0.75, and I don't think they've got 0.75% here. We wouldn't have that water standing. And then a stabilized landscape area is, again, of 2 to 1, just as a previous slide. And so now let's look at the townhouse garden. We've got a few minutes left in this uh, lecture. Special site conditions, it's a space in a box. It's limited views and interest. I mean, they all they can do is look out the windows and see a wooden fence as of right now. It is a limited area. It has fixed access points, and there is a lack of privacy in certain instances because there are going to be houses built up here, and their backyards are going to look into their backyards. And yes, they do have some cedar trees and stuff planted here, but big deal. Um, still, still going to be an issue. The one thing I don't like is that grass strip in between it. It's standing water. It's mosquito heaven right there. Um, but this is the uh, the job that we priced. We actually priced. Um, doing a landscape patio in here with the fire pit and they thought we were just way uh, too expensive and in fact the uh, the lady told us um, you know and she she kind of specked out what she wanted and uh, you know we priced it and she's like I can go to Walmart and get one of those fire pits for two hundred dollars I'm like well then it's probably where you need to go and get it uh, uh, you know, but that's 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 not the quality of work that we're giving you. So, guys, you you've had those customers, uh, and the thing is, she's a friend of mine. Um, but our design guidelines: we're going to divide it into subspaces, increase perception of spatial size. So we're going to make it try to make it look bigger than we did. We're going to provide overhead planes 
and we're going to use existing perimeter walls and fences. And so what we also did, we priced uh, pressure washing that and staining that wall. Was, uh, we were just way too high on that even. But we were going to cover this patio uh, with brick pavers and extend it out to about right here. They wanted a fire pit uh, with natural gas because they couldn't have wood burning in the city limits. Um, so we had all kinds of, and basically what I did, I actually had my students, uh, do this as a project and, uh, and then my landscape company, um, price doing the work. So it was, uh, I learned my lesson. Uh, but you know, could really be a cool area, uh, if they, if they did it. But again, what are some issues with this courtyard? Well, for one, you know, running the gas line was going to be hard. Uh, yes, uh, you know, there's natural gas and it was on the side of the house, but we're going to have to, to, to trench and get it to the back, you know, have to pull a permit to, to get an HVAC contractor to run the natural gas to our fire pit. Uh, they wanted irrigation back there. They wanted drip irrigation, which we could have ran it off the faucet, but, uh, you know, that's, that's no way, uh, to do it. The outdoor faucet, we were going to put in a system, uh, for it. Um, didn't like the price of that either. And, and we were going to remove the grass. It was going to be all uh, plants. It did get hot back there uh, in the summertime, so we needed the drip irrigation. And we were going to add a couple, um, I forget, we were going to do, um, I think it was Fastigiat. I think it was one of the elm trees. I can't remember. This was, this was last fall. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, was going to be a nice, nice courtyard design. Ended up, you know, with anything other than the students design it. Uh, but, you know, had to cover up this. I mean, that's an issue. Uh, you know, the, the electrical outlets there and the TV cable going in. Uh, but they, uh, you know, they were responsible for the turf grass inside the fence. That's why we were going to get rid of all turf grass. Uh, the one thing I did like about it, they had the nice outdoor seating uh, when we put the pavers on top of it. It was going to bring this up to that height. We we're going to be able to move the grill to outside and kind of give them a little more room there with the outdoor furniture. But that's a nice, cool place to sit in the evenings. And it was a small 10 by 10 patio. Uh, like I said, we were going to extend it to out to about right here. And we were going to have a path going out to there. So it's gonna it's gonna be a real nice little courtyard design. Um, getting rid of the uh, the vegetable garden, you know, things that uh, the homeowners are trying to do. And this comes uh, from Residential Landscape Architecture by Booth and Hiss. Guys, I appreciate it. This course is worth one half credit for your irrigation contractor's license. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next lecture.